Hi everyone, so today I have a new video to share with you sponsored by Tonic Studios for their new uh, craft kit. I believe this is number 58, but generally they go by names um, now, so it's the Terrific Treats craft kit. So these items were sent free of charge from our review. Of course, all opinions are my own. And any links down in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're a purchase items to those links. So this is... Um, the latest box of course and um, we always you know it has a folder it has some stamps and some dies in there and then there's some fun um, embellishment type items and then the papers right so let's get right to it and I can hear I think one of the one of the um, dies might have come loose there so <laughs> let's see super cute um, it always comes with a sticker this one's happens to be terrific treats like I mentioned so you can always take that off do whatever you like with it but generally it's meant to go on the front of your little folder so when you put it in the binder that you get um i believe quarterly or every six months i don't really recall right now you place it in there and uh, it looks really nice and you can find it really easy whatever you're looking for so we have a split um die set here and then a photopolymer stamp set always photopolymer this one looks like it has little borders look at the little bells how sweet merry christmas and just like a little flourish can't wait to smell those. I love photopolymer stamps. And then here we have what makes our terrific treats um, case, I believe. But uh, what I love, and I get samples, so my samples sometimes look different than what you get. Um, usually there's like a checklist in here and some other info. Um, and a lot of times I don't have instructions, but I can see that there's um, instructions on this one. Yay! So we start with number one here. And this is just a quick, simple, you know, rundown of what you're uh, looking to do. So, we will follow those instructions today, but for right now, um, we have these pieces. Um, it looks like a main box piece, there's some inlays, there's a little portion that you might need for later. It looks like this might be um, this portion here, the lid, and then we have inlays on that, there's little slats, there's other pieces that you can use to make um, like topper pieces or mats, should I say, some mat with the inlay or however you want to use it. And then this little portion here also has inlays that go along with it. So, very curious to see how this comes together. Let's look at these guys. So, oh, that is awesome. Dual dot markers, metallic. I'm just reading what it says. So there's a detail nib and a flexible dot nib, and I've never seen these before. So, um... This looks like a gold color, but this is metallic, should I say. Um, so let's pop one out just to try it really quickly in case I don't use it in the project today. But um, I don't know if I have to shake them or they're ready. It looks like they're ready to go. Yeah. So obviously you can write with them if you want. That one's really thick, the chubbier nib side. And this one is the smaller one. Oh my gosh, look how fine that dot is on that. Cool. Oh my gosh. Okay. It looks like they are water-based, I would think. Uh, yeah, water-based, non-toxic, acid-free, so perfect for scrapbooking, it says. Pretty cool. Let me put those to the side there. Oh, I grabbed a few things. Okay, so we have um, pearled ivory in the Nouveau Mica Mist. This stuff is awesome. Mica Mist sprays really nicely. You just give it a nice little shake, you know, get the little mica going, and spray it on whatever project. So it's going to be very pearlescent and pretty. Pearled ivory. Um, here we have some glitter. Let me open this up. Well, it's called glitter, but this is sequins uh, in amber gold. I love it. I love tonic sequins because it's just very pretty and like stylized. Look at the shape of the size of them. You know, just really elegant. I guess is the word I'm looking for. So pretty. And then there's Sorry, little, then we have our little ribbon here. Um, it feels like grow grain ribbon with a little gold threading or like on the edges. Really, really pretty. Ooh, there's lots of gold stuff in here. I think we're going for gold this month. Um, this is the embossing powder. And you know what? This one has a little something different in it. Let's see. It's called Golden Egg. I'll say I recently was using their gold embossing powder, the classic gold, and it's very gold. And this one looks like it has a little something in there, a little chunkiness. Golden egg and little white speckles. Oh, flakes, gilding flakes. You know, guys, I haven't used these in a while. So all you do with glue flakes, they're so easy. Um, there are glues that you can use that help you use them. They're like, take a little bit longer to dry or something, so a little bit sticky for a little bit longer. But you can use any glue. Any glue that has a little bit of drying time, 
and I don't mean really sopping wet, I mean just apply a little bit on your project or if you're stamping you can put a little glue on a stamp and then stamp that and then all you do is pop the stuff on top and just rub it in and whatever comes away comes away and the rest will stick to the glue so there's different ways to use it um, but this is really pretty and it is yeah it's just called radiant gold it's hard to read the packaging but um, I just want to see if they call it something different than I'm saying but I can't see what the name of it is but there it is nice sized pot of that Oh yes, vintage drops and a gorgeous, gorgeous. I think this is gonna be uh, ivory buff. I was say ivory something, but I don't remember the last part of it. It's ivory buff, and again, vintage drops dry with like a satin finish, not super shiny, but not really matte. It's just a little satiny kind of matte finish. <laughs> and then the washi tape um, in Christmas magic. Oh my gosh, you guys, gold! I was gonna like speak. So we have gold. We have like the uh, gunmetal type of color, and then this one's just like a. Ivory with little gold dots. It looks like stripes, but they're little dots. So it's just that you're seeing the next layer, so that's why you see the that stripe look to it. Uh, what do we have in here? Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> so like I said, guys, I get samples, so sometimes I have something different. Um, so it says, there's a little note in here for me that the white and gold stripe, this one, full kit will be shipped on a round roll. Okay, so I have like a little sample here. Okay, guys, so that's a nice note. And so there's that. And then, ooh, the Christmas Magic double-sided pattern paper. Let's check this out. I love when they do paper pads like this. They, they make them really fun. So a lot of times it'll be patterns or like a new color trend or whatever, or like just different um, types of matte, metallic or metallic, should I say, papers. So this one's called Christmas Magic double-sided pattern paper. Eight designs, six of each. So. You can see it's matte colored paper on the other side is this little floral pattern on the other side of the um, plaid. Excuse me, yeah, so the plaid and then the little flowers. And this one we have like the little uh, triangles. And on the other side it has a gold kind of stripe. So it's kind of like a gold color, even though, you know, because it's not um, shiny, it's like a mustard color, but it looks very gold. So that's a really nice effect. And this one has the little black dots. And to be honest, I would love this for Halloween projects. <laughs> like the colorway on that. This one's kind of, again, um, looks gold, but it's like a mustardy, beigey color. And then here on this last one, really elegant with that little kind of star kind of pattern. And on this side, it has like a little plaid, little dots. So pretty. Okay, so those are the goodies. And then let's see about the papers. Now, I do not have a list of the papers right now, so I don't really have the names of them, but, um, as I said, generally you get one of each, but there's a couple of the blacks. This is like their thick black matte cardstock. We have a matte, a pearlized, sorry, a pearlescent black here. How pretty. Oh, look at the little hearts. Black with the gold hearts there. Again, super nice and thick. Ooh, this paper is really awesome. They have a paper just like this, but in a blue color that I have, and I've never seen it, I don't think, in this white. That's really pretty. Again, just like a textured paper. Um, <laughs> metallic paper. Um... They have different colors of gold and metallic, and this is one of the lighter ones, so I don't recall if it's like honey gold or what the name of it is, but they do have like three or four different metallic golds, so that's one of them. Uh, some white classic card, and oh, this is awesome. Um, so there's a black card with like gold speckles, kind of going back to that gilding flake, and then some cream colored um, classic card. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Uh, we'll keep our papers out. Pop these things back in here for now. And I'll open up the instructions and see what it is that I want to cut out and we'll get going. Okay. So, let's go say, creating a terrific treat box. Let me get these other guys out. Okay, guys, so we have our pieces here. Um, it does have a note that says there, uh, you want to start by cutting two each of the below shapes. Of course, the base. So, this piece, we need two. The ends, which are these pieces. This is going to be totally different because I just looking at them, I was like, hmm, what? How are you? It looks like a pillow box shape, but it's a little bit different than that. So you have that. We need the tab, which is this one here. And then we need the lid, which is this whole larger piece here. Okay. So again, you have decorations and things, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So for each of those, we need two of them. And I'll probably cut it from the black paper because we have uh, more of that black uh, cardstock. 
and then um, you go from there you're just putting it together so really simple it does say okay that's what I was gonna say as far as notes it says as with all 3d projects it can be easier to decorate your panels as you go for these instructions we're going just going to create a box a base box so like they're just showing you the basic construction and then you're gonna decorate it however you would like um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and get these base pieces cut out. I'm thinking about decorating it too because as you go further down it says to go ahead and give these like a rounded curve. And I think when you get there you probably want these pieces on there already if that's you know your decoration so it can also kind of be rounded at the same time. But let's for right now go ahead and cut the basic pieces. So I'll grab my black paper and we need two of each of these pieces. And I'll do that. Let me measure this guy for you guys, though, so you know the largest die size. It is um, edge to edge, like five and uh, five and three eighths. Let's say <laughs> I'm just giving you the measure of the actual metal, so that you know if you can put it through your machine uh, by just smaller than four. Okay, so that's the largest die. So I'll just run these through. And again, two of each, and I'll grab it. I just want to show you how I got it all done on one piece of paper. I wasn't sure how these guys would sit next to each other, so I did run them through separately. All right, the two larger dies, like this guy, and the larger die there. But I do want to show you how I got them all on one piece of paper cut out. So these guys here, those two there, and these two here. Okay, uh, so I will put that down here. So we have our two pieces. And again, those would be easy to decorate because they're just flat. This is the one that I want to probably decorate ahead of time just because it is going to be curved. I don't think it's the biggest deal though because I think I'm just going to put in the topper pieces that are like really intricate. So just an inlay without a background piece. But, um, you know, we'll have that. So we have two of those, two of that tab piece that they talked about, two of the lid, and two of the um, base piece. So let me put this here. And we have these gorgeous things. I mean, I didn't even spend time talking about this. Sorry, guys. So look at the chain work on that one. Or, like, the beautiful leaves on this. Or I, I think this is what I'm, what I'm going to do. I really like the look of that. So, um, even these little tab sides here have also pieces for it. So I'll use the same one uh, to coordinate with that. And then the side pieces also have uh, inlays, if you would like. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is, there's one that has straight edges, there's one that has the cute little um, dots in the edges. Hmm. Oh my gosh, that's so hard to choose. <laughs> so pretty. Um, let's go with straight this time. So we have that one, that one, and then this one is the inlay for this guy. And then it also has a chain link one, you know. And then the very sides, so this here on the side also has a decorative piece and I don't know if you can see on this there's like a little area that's gonna be like this it looks like this piece actually if you want to cut that out you can also add that as an accent piece in here as you can see there so there's another little extra piece um, but for right now sorry guys I'll take this one that again goes back to that same kind of uh, leafy look oopsie and I'll matte layer that into this or uh, inlay it. Now on this one I'm not going to inlay it because I just can see that this has like a solid bar here that I really don't think we should run these two together because um, the metal's in the way. So uh, let me put some things to the side real quick and I'll show you what I mean. I'll put these to the side. So for like this guy I can go ahead and put them together. Now you can do a background piece of a different color and then do an inlay piece. I'm just going to go right to the inlay so we'll do the construction today. That's something we're going to focus on today. So again, whenever you run these guys through, you want to um, tape them so that they don't move. I'll probably put another piece of tape here. This one, I can't put that one in with it yet, so I'm just going to run that through by itself. And then when it comes out, I'll just take this away and then place this, just the inlay piece, on my little die cut piece and run it through. Okay, so we can't do it together at this time. And then this guy. And we need... I'll say I think we need four of these because we need one for this side, one for this side. And that's if you want to cover both of them. If you only care about covering one, that's fine. But otherwise, we need four of these guys. So, two of this, right, for the front and the, these pieces here. Two of this for the tabs, unless you also want to decorate the inside. Two of this one. Four of this one. 
And I always try to just maximize my paper as much as I can. So whatever I do to get that in there. Again, tape it down so it doesn't move. And run these pieces through. And I'll come back when I have all the pieces that I need. Just cutting like butter. So pretty. Look at that. I'm trying to get this gold off the <laughs> camera because it freaks it out. But there you go. Look at that. Okay, and so for these two guys, just to finish them off, again, all I'm going to do is lay this on here, put a little piece of tape, and then run that through, okay, to get that um, design in there. Okay, guys, so we have our pieces. So what we're going to do is, I know one of these is going to go on top of the other one. Good for that. And I just want to make sure, yeah. So, on this nice side, we are going to glue down our pieces. And I always glue to the, the nice cut side, right, where the die was. So let me get this going. And so on these side pieces, I'm just turning it over so the nice side is facing up. Just going to get these on here. And, you know, you can put a little glue on the back of your hand if you feel like that's what you want to do. I always kind of dab some of this off because I don't really like it coming out so much. Even at that, look at that. There we got some on the other side. Okay, so in this little area here, just going to line that up. Place that in there. And of course, I'll do the same thing for the second piece on that nice side. I'll lay this piece on there. And then this guy, same thing, but we're just going to put these guys on. And later in the instruction, excuse me, later in the instruction, it does say to curve these a bit. So I like to curve things when the glue is still wet. So, like, I'm going to place this one down. Let me get a little bit of that off. And I'm just following that space that's there, trying to split the difference. I guess I can get a little bit closer. What's nice about these is that since it's literally the same piece, all you're going to do is turn this piece this way. And let me make sure it's all cleaned out. And then this guy is over here. And like I said, later in the instruction it says to... Um, Give it a curve. So while this is wet, I always like to do that kind of thing now. And this goes here. And again, you have that other piece that you can decorate this center piece with. There is an opening right here, so you definitely want to clear that when you're laying this stuff down. Mine could be a little bit higher up. Okay. Let me show you again what I mean. There's like a little slot here. So you don't want this obviously obstructing that slot, so just make sure you're cleared that. And whenever you glue like a little bit over, I always kind of clean it up. You can actually just take a paper towel and rub over that and it'll really help pick it up. Or you can wait till it's done and then just kind of go like this and it rubs away. So whatever it is that you think you need to do. So I'll do the second one just like this. And then this little guy is going to go on the sides I believe. Yeah. So we're going to decorate this outer piece of course, the nice side showing. And on both these guys, we'll put this. But let me curve the thing like I was mentioning before. Sorry guys, I got ahead of myself. That one there nice and even. Okay, we'll do the second one like that. And this one, they're saying to take like a... some kind of tool to help you kind of just give it a curve. And like I said, I like to do that when the glue is still a little bit wet because it kind of helps you do that and it looks really nice. So let's just give it some curving and I'll do the same thing for the second one, okay? And I'll be right back. Okay, so we have all our pieces here and we're just going to get started. So, you know, we cut them, we went ahead and decorated them, although it you know, talks about decorating them as you go along. Um, so that's pretty much what I did, although the uh, instructions are very basic here. So all we're going to do is turn these guys over. And just like when you're making a box, like sometimes you need to have to have the two pieces, one goes over the other. That's all we're doing here. I always like to score first. It does say to glue them and then score. But for me, I just feel like when it's open like this, it's easier time. So I'm going to go ahead and score them. If you want to use a bone folder, go for it. I always just kind of finger score these things. And that also kind of helps me when I go to place it, know where to stop, right? Where to put the other one a little bit better. So I'm just going to score that. Score this one. Okay. And then all we're going to do is inlay these two. Right? So the pretty side is obviously out. We're going to lay those one over the other. 
and I always try to put as much glue as I can right close to the edge but not right at the edge because uh, then it'll just kind of squeeze out everywhere so just again laying those on top feels like I have some good clearance that looks good nice and square on the outside okay there's that part that's pretty cute um, okay full long score lines so using a craft creaser on the back of your uh, or with the back of a pair of scissors add a curve to your two lid die cuts which we already did since, since it was wet that's what I prefer to do using the glue tabs from your base die cuts and your lid die cuts adhere end die cuts and lid die cuts to your assembled base so basically we have these pieces um, and on this one I'm just gonna fold it a little bit on that line And we're going to take these pieces, and I think it's smarter to start with these guys, right? Glue those on, and then go with the rest. So we have these tabs on the side here, and so we're just going to glue that, put some glue on this one, and glue on this one, and bring in that gorgeous side piece here. And I'm going to do it all at once, but you don't have to do that. Of course, you can glue, like, let's say this base piece, and then bring in the sides. So I'm going to hold that for just a little bit, just so that sets up. Making sure it's nice and flush at the base. And I'll bring these guys in. And I'll hold those. So I'm going to hold that for just a little bit. And I'll do the exact same thing with our second piece on the other I side. I just want to show you, you know, I placed that and I was kind of holding it up here. But you can also just place it flush, you know, to your surface or table or whatever it is. And just kind of push down there, just making sure that's on there. I like to use a white glue because it keeps that better over time. But whatever it is that you like to use. Now these guys... You're going to use these flaps, and then there's these little slits in the flap. I don't know if you can see those. That's basically so when, at the end, when we bring it in, one of these guys is going to have these little slits that are going to line up into the other. Okay, so here it tells you to go ahead and do that and then add them on at the end. If you want to add them now, knowing that they're going to have to slit into something like this, you can kind of have an idea where that might be and then glue them, right? And then glue the other one down so you're glue it to here is just knowing where it's going to go but for now let's just do what it says I'm going to give this more of a curve because I hope maybe you can see now that this is going to really curve around this way and it goes through these guys these slits right go on there and then the other one comes over in the other direction so it's really really structural so down here on these glue tabs I'm going to put glue just on this tab portion and I'm going to glue that in. I'm just trying to think how I want to do this. Hold on. I'm going to turn it back just a little bit to make it easier for me to pop this in here. Okay. It's right there. And I'm just holding it. I'm looking through the glue tabs because I can see through there that I'm not covering them up too much. But right at the edge. I know it might be hard to see. I'll show you in just a minute. And just push this down so it's holding on. So I can see clearly these tabs are uh, not obstructed, right? And then the rest is just lined in there really well. Now, funny enough, you can probably push the other one down a little further because you only need one side that has slots. So this will be my slide that, that my slide, my side that I'll put these tabs on. So they push in there. On the second piece, I'll push it in a little bit further. But let this set up and I'll be right back to put the second piece on. Here's this one, second piece. And again, I kind of popped it up a little bit so it can slide in easier and this time I'll probably push it down a little bit further like I said just so it finishes off a little nicer there so this time I can actually just open it up like this and hold on to it but if you still want to go like this then just lay it down and push that down I'm just touching it from the inside I know it's hard to see I'm like in here this is so interesting. It's totally different than anything I've seen before. So I'm not going to mess with this until this is set up. So I will be right back. Okay, guys. So let's check this out. Again, I had said I was going to slot into this side, I think. It doesn't really matter. You're just going to pick one. So if this was here, actually, that means this one comes over first. Again, it goes into these pieces here. And then that's what we have our little ribbon because it's going to help you put that together if you want or whatever you want. And then this side is going to come up over this way. And that slots in. So let me just see kind of where those would need to be. Right, we have this and this. Look at this. Oh my gosh. You guys. <laughs> so cool. 
Okay, so from here, I just want to see how far down I need this to go. These pieces are going to glue on this outermost one here. So what I'm going to do is actually pop them in right here. <laughs> that way I can see where I need to glue them. And this is just my idea. You can do whatever you think is easiest. Yeah, about there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put glue. Kind of turn that down there. Of course on that whole tab. Kind of turn them up this way so that they're where they need to be. Bring this over. Sorry. Oh, I hope I was in frame. Wasn't 100% sure if I was in frame there. And then I'm going to pop these out just a little bit because I know they're not going to be 100% like super, super flush. So let's do that. At least that way I know where those are going to be. And then I'm going to adjust it, okay? So hopefully this <laughs> is a good idea. I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to hold it there. As I'm holding them, I'm going to push these guys up to where they should probably be, so it looks the nicest. A little up there, a little up right here. That looks good. I'm just kind of tucking them up into where I think they should be. Hopefully you can see that. And it looks like if I didn't do that, I'll give you another tip. But I'm just going to hold this. Again, I only put glue on that little tab. I'm just going to hold this till it's set up and then I'll show you kind of where that placement was and that way you can just place it next time and not have to do what I did right now. I'll be right back. I'm bringing them out even though they're a little bit wet. There we go. Just to show you the actual placement. So see how this curves and this curves? That's basically where I place them. Where this curves is right on the edge. So next time, if you want to put that, just know that that'll work best. Right at the curb. Okay, I'm going to let that set up real well and I'll be right back. So we'll put this together in just a minute. So to finish up, I took a length of ribbon. Hopefully I eyeballed that good and well enough. And I always like to just singe the edges just so it doesn't unravel just very quickly because you don't want to melt it too much or catch on fire there. Okay, so you have this again that goes that way. And then this piece comes up here. Just looks like, just like such a cool like stylized little thing and then these guys can go in here now you can probably bend them at this point um, but for right now I had left them pretty straight but then that goes in there <laughs> just want you to appreciate look how cute that is let me um, then take this and I think we'll just bring it here it does have little um, score lines so if you want to just bend them but um, I'll just let it do its thing naturally since it'll get there anyway Right from here to here. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, let me pull this a little bit more this way. How cute is that? I mean, honestly, if you want to make it handles, you can make little handles. Like a little handle instead of a bow, but I'm just going to tie this into a bow. And I would say that was probably a foot and a half of ribbon. A little bit, a little bit long, but that's... Better to give yourself extra than too little by the time you get there, right? I mean, that looks actually really, really cute. Um, so let's get a measurement. So thank you so much, Tonic, for uh, sponsoring the video, for sending these items for review. This is just really cool. It is um, just shy of four inches. I don't know if you can see it. It's like three and seven eighths inches. And then the height here at the base is, I would say, about one inch. But, you know, in the height from the side here... It's like two, two and a quarter maybe. It's hard to tell. And then the width there is about two and a quarter. Again, about four inches. And then the top has a little extra. I mean, that is so cute. And then, you know, whatever tag, little, little if you have little tags in your stash, I know you do. Uh, you can put that on there. I thought this would be a really, really pretty one to add. The um, beautiful uh, moments to treasure or like a gift for, for my heart, a gift to you, you know, for you. This would be a cute one to add on there. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll have images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box. And, um, you know, I did, forgot to mention at the top, the subscription, uh, they have a monthly subscription. They usually have a quarterly one. They have a one-off purchase. Me, I just want the box, and I don't want to uh, sign up for a subscription. But if you are signed up for the subscription, it's monthly or quarterly. And then you get 10% off the site if you use the code TCK for your purchases throughout the month that you are active. So um, something to keep in mind. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.